This video is brought to you by Storyblocks. All right, guys, I got a little competition for you both. You know, I was able to steal Tainas' glove and I put it over there. But the first one to get there can have the glove and, of course, also world domination. I'm ready for it. That's good, Jenik. Ready, set, go. Cheater! <laughs> hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to the first Copycat Friday of the year. In this weekly series we recreate simple effects from music videos and films. Now today we are having a look at three effects in one video. We'll be looking at the speed of Quicksilver, Captain America and how he throws his shield around, and finally at Nightcrawler and his teleportation effects. Now before we jump into these effects, I'd first like to thank our sponsor Storyblocks, which is an online library packed with video effects, transitions, after effects templates and high quality 4K stock clips. Every day new video assets are added to the growing library and you can download everything you like without having to pay extra. For more information make sure to click the first link in the description below. Let's start off with Quicksilver and his speedrun. What you're gonna need to do is put your camera on a tripod or anything else so that it can't move. Then have someone run from point A to point B in that shot. When you're done, don't forget to take an empty shot as well. In Adobe Premiere Pro, that empty shot goes to the bottom of your timeline and on top of there goes the shot of you running. We're going to start off by isolating the part where you run, so add a cut right after you start and another cut right before you stop. Next, place your playhead on the first cut, then right click on the middle part and choose frame holds. With that middle part selected, head over to the effects controls, opacity and from there click on the pen tool. Now draw a mask around your subject and this doesn't have to be precise, you can do this roughly. When you're done, right click on the middle part and choose nest. This will group the clip into another sequence, which we have to do to avoid a complication. Next up, search for the transform effect in your effects library and drag that to the nested sequence. You want to create a keyframe within that effect for the position property in the beginning of the clip. Then move a little forward in time and move the freeze frame with that property to the right. Make sure that it aligns with your ending. When you're done, make sure to add some acceleration to the animation. And you can do so by right clicking on the first keyframe, temporal interpolation and then ease out. For the last keyframe, you want to choose ease in. Now this might be confusing, but you have to see an animation as something linear. As the animation starts, it's placed to the right, so it goes out of the keyframe and at the end it goes into the keyframe. Finally, deselect to use composition shutter angle and set something to around 250 to introduce a lot of motion blur. Now trim the nested sequence to the end of the keyframe and close the gap. That's it. For the next effect we need the shield of Captain America and that is made from adamantium. We don't have that at Cinecom, so cardboard it is! This is also how they did it at Marvel, I'm pretty sure about it. Lorenzo asked what I'm making. It's quite obvious what I'm making. It's the Hulk. It's the Hulk. <laughs> Good job, Janik. By the way, guys, if you'd like to see all the behind the scenes as we work on these episodes, then make sure to follow us on Instagram. Link in the description as well. Now, for throwing a shield like Captain America, all you're gonna need to do is set your camera on a tripod again and throw a shield. If you wanted to catch it as well in the same shot, then you need someone else to throw it back at you. Then step out of the shot and take an empty plane. In Premiere Pro, the empty shot goes to the bottom and the throwing shot on top. Now just like before, we're going to add a cut right after I throw and one before I catch. Then duplicate this middle clip by holding down the Alt key and drag it to the track above. We're going to need it two times because we need to remove Janik from the shot. Select the duplicate, head over to the opacity and take the pen tool. Draw a quick mask around yourself. 
When you're done with this, you can easily copy the mask that you've just created and paste it by selecting the opacity property of the other clips. After this, add a frame hold to the middle top clip like before and jump into the opacity property to take the ellipse mask tool. Draw it around the shield and adjust the ellipse where necessary. Then right-click on the middle clip and nest it. Apply the transform effect to it and create a keyframe for the position. Move to the center of the clip and change the position to your target. Then go to the end and pull the shield back to you. Now, all of these steps were exactly the same as the first effect, but now comes a few differences. It's gonna be important to get the physics of the shield right, so the first thing that I'll do is select the transform effect, which will reveal the path of the animation. Pull on the levers of the keyframes to change the path. As you throw the shield, it can go in a pretty straight line, but as it bounces into something, you can add a curve to the keyframe. And this is a process where you need to see how it looks, adjust and go back. The next thing is gonna be acceleration, which we've seen before. As the shield bounces into a wall, it goes slower, so right-click on the middle keyframe and choose Ease Out. You can actually expand the position property and see the velocity curve. Pull on the lever of the middle keyframe to make it even more slower after the bounce and then make it go faster again. Also here, a setting that you need to adjust, see the result and then probably adjust again until you get it right. Every situation is different. Don't forget to also animate the scale. In our example, I scaled the shield from 100 to 80 and then back to 100. It's pretty minimal. When you're done, disable composition shutter angle and set it to 180 degree for a natural motion blur. I'm gonna add one last effect to it, which is a spark. This is something that we've created ourselves. On Storyblocks, you can actually find a bunch of sparks that we've added to the library, but we've got one that you can have for free and download from the description. Import that clip and drag it to the timeline on top. With it selected, head over to the opacity property and just change the blending mode to screen. Then simply scale and position it at the point where the impact of the shield is at. Moving on to the last superhero effect, we are taking a look at the teleportation effect from Nightcrawler. Now there is this black particle cloud around him as he teleports, so we decided to start with that. We had an ingenious plan to drop black ink into a white plate and use that as the effect. Practical effect with the ink and the water didn't work, so I decided to make it completely in After Effects. All by myself. Like, completely out of nothing. Nope, he got it from Video Copilot. I'll leave a link to the After Effects tutorial in the description below. If you don't want to go through all of that hassle, we've also created a particle cloud ourselves, which you can download again from the description below and just use that straight away. As for the shots, the only thing that you need to have is do a jump in the air, then move to a different spot and jump again. Also here, don't forget to take an empty shot as well. In Premiere Pro, place the empty shot on the bottom and the jumping shot on top. Right after Lorenzo jumps in the air, you add a cut. Do the same thing right after he makes his second jump. The middle part can be deleted this time. We already have a teleportation effect, but we're gonna make it look a little bit better. For starters, import the particle cloud, which you can download from the description. It's a normal video clip of a white digital ink explosion on a black background. Drag it to the top of your edit. Start off by searching for the invert effect in your effects library and drag that to the explosion clip. This will make the background white and the cloud black. With the clip itself selected, head over to the opacity property and change the blending mode from there to multiply. This will remove the white and only show the dark clouds. Reposition and scale that cloud to be on top of your subject as he or she jumps into the air. The shockwave is probably going to be a bit too slow, definitely in the beginning, so what we'll do next is right-click on the FX button of the clip and choose Time Remapping Speed. We can now take the pen tool from the toolbox and create keyframes on the speed within that clip. Click to create a keyframe on the point the cloud is open. Now take back the normal selection tool and push the line up to increase the speed of the left part of the clip. The shockwave will now explode fast and then go back to normal speed. If you like the transition between the two speeds to be smoother, you can drag to open the time remapping keyframe, and that way it will go from one speed to the other gradually. Now there is this one final touch that we're going to add to the effect, which is going to be a distortion of time and space. For this, I'm going to create an adjustment layer from the project panel. 
drag that to the top of your edit and make sure that it starts with the shockwave effect. Next, from the effects library, search for the turbulent displace effect and drag that to the adjustment layer. Change the displacement to twist. We're now going to animate the waves from large to small, but it has to be subtle. So start by setting the amount to around 25 and the size to around 70. Go further in time and change the amount to 0 and the size to 2, which is the minimum. Currently, this distortion is visible in the entire shot, so from the turbulent displays effect, click on the ellipse mask tool. Move that mask around the shockwave and increase its size perhaps. Finally, increase the feather of that mask a bunch, and that way the distortion is only visible on the place of the teleportation. Now, when Lorenzo appears again, the whole process is exactly the same, so you can basically copy and paste all of the effects layers. And that's how you can run very fast into a teleportation to throw a shield to someone's head. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Storyblocks, for the support. And like always, Stay creative. Come on, I built. Yeah! Did you say? I'm holding it. Oh.